Uh, I figured we'd podcast. All right, you got everything set up? Oh, I'm set up. Are you set up? Are you really set up? Yeah, I'm really set up. I got a mic right here. All right, do I need to do anything? Yeah, you need to set up a mic. Okay, how do I do it? Later that same evening. Hello. Sorry, I accidentally dropped you uh, the phone on the ground a little bit there. Hello? Son of a biscuit. Later that same evening. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm plugging in my headphones. Hold on here. But I'm still trying to figure out how to, uh... Okay, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so I, I got my uh, my headphones plugged in here, so I'm just trying to make it so the recording is done. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it so the recording is done through this road mic, but I'm on the... You still there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm still... I'm trying to uh, to make it so the road mic is the one that's getting the audio input, but I don't see that selection. You're gonna have to, you might have to go to system preferences. Look, we we can't spend the whole podcast doing this, so maybe just oh, use. Oh, have you already started doing the podcast? I'm. You're live. You're live on well, here. I didn't know I was. I didn't know I was live. I mean, well, I gotta talk to well, you, you, you before. You're not actually you're live, live, but you're you're on you're on the air. Later on, it'll be revealed. But yeah, nobody's live here. I'm not live in anything, but you're on the air. Okay, okay let me just, I'll just start here. Okay, let, let's go then. Okay, so look, I tried to call you earlier, and I was really hoping you weren't going to hang up on me because I just was going to say this. Okay, so like, let's pretend like I just called you right now. Okay, answer okay. the phone. Hello? It's Frank Costanza. Steinbrenn is here. George is dead. Call me back. <laughs> George is dead. Call, Call me, me back. back. <laughs> George, Georgie, listen. I, I, I love the. I, can we talk about the? Um, can we talk about the hand, the hand model episode for a second? I love. I love. George's mother in this episode so much because and I love one scene in particular is when is when his his mother goes well what do you want me to do with the pudding and he said I'll take it in my room <laughs> yeah, I, <know>. I, lo- <laughs> I love that too <laughs> and, and the, the father you know and Frank is there and he's like he goes you know what does my family become like is my son really you know this this you know this hand model and, and like the whole dynamic there is incredible yeah, and she goes, I always knew your hands were so beautiful. And he goes, ah, get out of here. <laughs> and then what, and then what, didn't it, weren't they out to eat all together as a family? And, um, no, it was, it was at the house. It was at the house, yeah, fr- with the knife. When he freaked out about the fork or the knife or something. Oh, no, it was, uh, I think it was scissors. It was scissors, right? He was, he was, oh, yeah. he was buffing his nails. <laughs> And he goes, scissors, and she hands him and goes, not with the point out. <laughs> oh, I love that. And then, and then who, what was the, here's a good trivia question. What was the name of the hand model before that, that was not master of his domain? Oh, that is a very good question. Now that, that is an A1 question you just asked right there. And I'm going to need, I'm going to need a couple seconds, but I might not even be able to get this one. That's, that's a very good question. Oh, they just referred to him by last name, didn't they? Mostly by last name? It was, it was a, it was a, it was an alias for sure. It was not a real name. Oh, man. Hmm. Oh, but I, it was the it was the puffy shirt episode. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I remember. Yeah, because then George grabbed the uh, the iron at the end, and uh, it was ruined. And apparently, pigeons heard how loud he screamed. But um, 
I'm trying to remember this <laughs> this guy's name. I love I love when they first see his hands and the woman goes, "They're exquisite." Yeah. <laughs> like nothing is exquisite about George. No, no. But his hand, but but his hands did never do any manual labor, so they were in pretty good shape. I know the answer. Do you want me to keep? Do you want me to keep? Uh, keep you on the hook here or do you want me to, to give it to you oh definitely don't just give it but i'll take a hint and I, I feel like i should be able to come up with it if i get a hint it's a contra it's it's just his last name like you said or an alias of his last name but it's a contraction type situation like a like a mick right I, I i was i was thinking like mcguire but i knew that wasn't it you're close you're close it's mckigney the mckigney guy mckigney that's it Mc, it's McKigney, McKigney. Like, you know, they're, they're reflecting on, he's like, oh, Mc, the McKigney guy, he had a few good years. Oh, okay. I don't, I didn't remember that was his name. No, I knew it was like a Mick something, but I didn't realize it was McKidney. Hmm. And it, so, McK you know, his, you know his first name too? No, no. Oh, okay. I thought they just referred to him by last name. Yeah, McKigney. McKidney. Are you sure it's McKidney? It's McKigney. There's a, yeah, it was Ray McKidney. Ray McKidney. Oh, Cause, okay. Yeah, because he goes, I hadn't seen another pair of hands since Ray McKidney until today. Oh, And then okay. remember he goes, I hope you have more self-control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, he could have any woman he wanted, but alas, the only one that could that could measure up was his hand. <laughs> That's Something the only like one. that. What was it? Do you remember? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, because he, cause he goes, well, George talks about, well, I won a contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> I love that. I love that line. So, um, one of the things I was going to, I was going to discuss with you is that uh, uh, it's re unrelated to Seinfeld, um, actually it is, everything's related to Seinfeld, but I didn't intend to relate it to Seinfeld, and it was that I had to give blood today, and I thought of you because I made up about a hundred million excuses to not go, and I feel wait, like... Wait, wait, so why did you, you don't have to do anything. Well, I had, based on the doctor's recommendation, he wanted me to give some blood. It wasn't like I was donating gallons. I just needed to have like a blood test. So it's, it really wasn't a lot, but I don't like doing it. And so last week I had scheduled it and then like the first sign happened and like the place I scheduled it to be at uh, decided that they were gonna shut down and not tell anybody. So I called their number, nobody answered, and then I called the Walgreens right next door, and the guy goes, and he was kind of an Indian guy, and he goes, oh, no, they, they've been shut down maybe two or three weeks. I was like, what? Because online it said they were open. And so that was the first sign. And can you hear me okay over there? I can hear you probably better than okay. okay. Yeah, better than okay. Okay. And, uh, so then I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess uh, I won't have to do it. And then I, the, I told the doctor about it, and he found another place, so he put me in for a different order. And then today I was, uh, I was trading stocks, and I was, like, just trying to, like, pretend like I needed to be there all day because I knew the place closed at 4. And then at, like, 3.10, I was like, okay, let me try to leave. And then the whole time I was thinking, well, they're not going to want to take me at, like, you know, 3.45, so I probably won't have to get it done. But then, you know, my dad's getting that hip surgery tomorrow, so I was like, well, I probably should get it done. Anyway, I showed up. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was today. That's why I called you earlier to, um, to wish him well. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow it's morning. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So then I get there, and, like, apparently the way it works is this, this uh, lab core or whatever is in a Walgreens. So they have like a locked door, like you know in like New York if you want to go to the bathroom there's like a code on the door inside an establishment you have to go to Starbucks and buy like yeah, so 200 you just pee out, Yeah, so you just pee outside. Yeah, at least $200 worth of Starbucks merchandise and then they'll give you a code 
one time That's code to unlock yeah. a door and then they don't want you to ever go number two in there it's just for number one purposes anyway it was, there's a door like that and uh okay. and i i didn't know if i should like knock on it uh but i didn't and then i i had to fill out some like ipad application where they just scanned all my cards like my driver's license my insurance all that stuff and so there's a guy in well, front how'd you feel about how'd you feel about the scan Oh, I hated the scan. I, I know you it. didn't. See, the scan, it it wouldn't freak me out. But I mean, you're somebody that doesn't even FaceTime with a you know a, a willing and and um, waiting a waiting and willing iPhone. So yeah. I feel like the scan to you, to me, that would be a, a deal breaker for you. Why? Why? I, I could see you just walking out. You know, after the scan. Yeah, the only thing that kept me going was that I was thinking that I can't get the blood test tomorrow or maybe even this whole week because I'll be helping um, out uh, my dad after the surgery. So then I was okay. I, that that was really the only thing that made me allow that invasion of privacy. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, I was just kind of freaked out in there because like the door locks, like nobody can see me behind there. Like there's a lot of things that weren't not really helping the situation. Anyway, there's a, one old guy before me. He goes in, comes out a couple minutes later, and he, he's walking, he's starting to walk out of the store. He turns around, walks over to me. I go, hmm, wonder what this is gonna be about. And uh, he comes over to me. Oh, dale, muchacha, okay, what are you doing? Crazy drivers. And he comes over to me, stops, like kind of shuffle stops right in front of me, looks at me, he goes, well, She's a bear today. <laughs> so he's looking at you. So so he's looking at you. You're sitting. He's standing. Yeah. Both of you have ma both of you have masks on. Yeah. Now does he have le does he have leather sandals on by any chance? I picture him with leather sandals and and glasses. I do not. He definitely had glasses, but I do not remember the shoe situation. But he, he walked over to me and said that, and I said... She's I, a, a bear. A bear today. She's a bear today. Okay. today. Yeah. So, she, so he's clearly seen her on, on different days. Or maybe she's that aggressive that he knows that today she's a bear. I don't know. But either way, that's what he revealed to me. And then he kind of like was about to say something else. Then he just like kind of shook his head like he couldn't even believe it. Like how... So oh. definitely, may, so after you're done getting scanned, yeah. you get the most, you get the most reassuring yeah. sort of. <laughs> right. So it's already like when the shift is about to end for her, apparently. So you, guy, you realize if this was me, I'm hyperventilating on the floor. I am screaming down the street, taking off all my clothes and, and doing something. Like if I hear someone's a bear, if I hear the Walgreens cashier is a bear, I'm out of there. You're just I'm gonna steal out. it. I'm freaking out. Yeah, I'm freaking out. I'm gonna steal, you know, the, uh, the the pack of pencils or whatever I'm at Walgreens for. I'm freaking out. I might not make it out of the store if I hear that she's a bear. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you sat there. Did you say thank you? Like, did you have a re like an audible response? Like, what what happened? No, I I was so like I was already feeling like everything was stacked against me and then he said that i was like oh shit but in my head because i i didn't know what to say to that uh and then he was about to say something and just kind of shook his head like he couldn't believe it walked away and then uh and then and then i'm sitting there and i and then uh I, she never even like walked out of the door she just like poked her head out so i was like reading something on the phone and i she like hello <laughs> look up and her head's just poking out of that little locked door and I was like oh okay so I I go back there and I had I had been told you know if to bring some music it helps relax you so I had my iPod and like a little headphones I was like can I listen to some music I don't care if you do I was like oh shit Ooh, <laughs> wow it's gonna be so bad. I mean uh, bring some music helps relax you I mean are you getting are you getting a uh, dialysis done like it should be just a snip snip you're done whoa whoa there's no snip what the hell did I say I was going in for Listen, I thought you were getting snipped. <laughs> no, that's a sign cut. <laughs> but anyway, this story is anticlimactic because she was actually really good and everything turned out okay. So no snip. No snip, no snap. So you, she's bullish. You know, yeah, yeah, she was, stock de she was yeah. definitely not bearish today. 
At least not to me. Maybe he said some shit that made her be more bearish. She just seemed kind of uh, indifferent and ready to go, but she didn't get like angry at me or anything. That's wonderful. Now yeah. this this reminds me um, of the episode where they're trying to get, you know, insurance covered massages. Right. Right. I yeah. love. I love. You know, Seinfeld has had many of shots inside waiting rooms yeah. and normally a waiting room scene is not at, that interesting but the waiting room scenes on Seinfeld I've loved every one of them and I can picture most of them yes I can too the d the dentist with uh, with the, with the, um, the pornography right what was his name again <laughs> I was just talking about him the other day come on you don't know the dentist I name? know the dentist I know you're, the dentist. Are you, you're an anti-dentite if you don't remember. Oh, 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 ever... oh, 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 um, Watley. <laughs> Dr. Watley, thank you. Yeah, yeah, um, Doctor. I was telling, I was Next telling my mom. Next year they're going to be wanting their own schools. Yeah, I, yeah, I know, I love that line too. They do have their own schools. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling my mom about uh, how Jerry was so upset and was talking to the priest about Watley converting to Judaism. And uh, the priest goes, and this offends you as a Jewish person. And Jerry goes, no, no, <laughs> it, it offends, offends me as a comedian. As a comedian. <laughs> I That's love great. That. Yeah, because you know, obviously Jerry is not a practicing right Jew, but he is. You know, you know, this is what's kept us through the last two thousand years, five thousand years. Yeah. Yeah. I need a uh, stickle of fluoride. <laughs> You know, I would love, I would have loved to see, because you know, Jerry Seinfeld is in fact Jewish in real life. They yeah. could have included, you know, some pictures or, or video of his bar mitzvah because I would have loved that. Oh, if they have video of that, I would love to see that. Because you know that he was an awkward, you know, an awkward kid growing up. Um, but I would have loved to see him at his bar mitzvah because you know he had to have one. I'm sure he had. Oh one. yeah, I mean they they weren't rich, but I mean if you weren't like dead broke and you were Jewish, you had a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. Yeah, I'm sure he might have had it at the at the community pool center on Long Island. <laughs> yeah. Well, wasn't he living in? Uh, I only know this because of that comedians in cars getting coffee. Wasn't he living yeah. in like Connecticut or something for a little while? Maybe, but you know, I thought that New most Hampshire? of his childhood was spent in Long Island. Oh, okay. You're you're probably right. I I just remember he drove somebody around and like they went by his childhood home and like a restaurant near his childhood home, and it was definitely not in Long Island. Okay. Well, you state. know, they may have yeah, they may have moved. Yeah, I think that's a very good deduction there. <laughs> you know who else moved is Elaine because I remember when we first started calling and talking with each other about you know we would you know if we had a couple tri you know interesting trivia questions we call I, I thought I had a banger I said where is Elaine from and I think you grabbed it right away and you said Maryland Maryland yeah um, yeah but maybe you didn't grab it right away oh no I, I mean, grabbed you know you you did you did get it right away I grabbed it right away. You got so th those. That's a low. In in law school, you call that the low lying fruit. You want to grab those first. You grabbed it. Yeah, they they've had that phrase outside of law school. I don't know if you're familiar. I don't think you know because I've been other places outside of law school. The first time I heard it was the low lying fruit was there. Are you sure you heard it elsewhere? Is this a joke or you are actually serious right now? I'm serious. Hundred percent serious. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's oh, that, hey, muchacho, <laughs> what are you doing, Dala? Okay, sorry. Um, so you are driving, recording our very first podcast on the road. I don't know if I should feel, I feel like, you know, I'm sitting, I, I scheduled this. You said, you know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, eight minutes, six minutes. You know, you were counting out and I was preparing, you know, I was here, I'm sitting, you know, this is, I'm devoted to this and I don't feel the same from you. Are you going to always be in transit? Is this is this a regular thing? 
<laughs> yeah, transit is a regular, pretty regular thing. People do it no. surprisingly. No, are often. you going to be in transit for the majority of our of our calls? You know, I cannot speak to that, Senator, but uh, I hope that uh, I can devote the proper amount of time to make you feel at ease, and uh, I hope that we can grab some low-lying fruits. Well, speaking of low-lying fruit. Can we talk about how I feel like Kramer is the only one that eats a balanced diet? Yeah, but only in like what one episode? Remember, he said he said uh, I, I'm I getting rid of my myself. refrigerator. It, it, I'm only eating it if it's fresh. No, but he always has prided himself on his slender figure and how he takes care. Of, you remember the Calvin Klein model? He goes, "Oh, I take care of myself." What? Remember when, he, remember when he's standing in front of Calvin Klein and Whitey Tidies, and they yeah. go, look at that figure, and yeah. look at the buttocks, and then Kramer goes, oh, I take care of myself. Yeah. But at the same time, Kramer's the one that's in Jerry Seinfeld's bed eating like 28 pounds of Kenny Rogers Roaster's chicken wings. But this is rotisserie chicken. He's not eating fr- uh, there, there's, No, those were rare. wings. Those were wings. Those were fried wings, you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying it. Okay. Well, for the majority of the time, Kramer is making balanced food. Okay, okay. And what about the sausages? This, uh, you can have a couple sausages in your life. I, there I feel were like, like a you know, thousand it's... sausages. <laughs> Listen, you can. Are you are you trying to are you trying to say that Kramer is not? healthy on the show no i'm not saying that but i would say this when i love the line when uh mandelbaum walks in to jerry's apartment sees all the sausages and goes what the hell is this <laughs> or no no he goes what the hell <laughs> or something like that right what was it no he said he, he says What's going on here? Or he he, he or says something about was Porky. It, yeah. Was it what in God's name? But it was something so like he was so shocked. What in God's name? No, it wasn't you say that. He was shocked and chagrined, yeah. mortified and, and stupefied. stupefied. Yeah, that was another. You know, Mandelbaum was another one of my favorite characters. That was like a, a like a guest character pretty often. Mandelbaum? Yeah, Mandel. Well, of course we have uh, Jackie Childs, Mandelbaum, um, Newman. Those are those are I think my top three. Oh, oh no, Putty. Putty's up there too. Top four. You know who I so, think doesn't get enough credit? Real quick, and it's a real quick topic. We can we can resolve it easily. Is the girl that Elaine roomed with? And who Kramer eventually dated, and they danced and ran into the uh, windshield table. Repeat that again. Okay, I think that the character who was Elaine's roommate, who Kramer eventually dates in one episode, uh, and then uh, they were dancing and um, fell into this weird table Kramer built out of a windshield. Remember that? She, she goes, uh, she goes... <laughs> the African dance. <laughs> yeah, but whenever she speaks, she goes, Highline. <laughs> like that. And I think it's so funny. And she always has like a straw, like lazily in her mouth whenever she's talking and doing stuff. And then like when she says, Oh, crap. <laughs> I, I think she has, she's funnier than she's given credit for. <laughs> So, don't lie. so you know, uh, Mandelbaum, don't lie to me, Butterbean. We're yeah. taking it up a notch. Yeah. He says, what do you want me to do? I want even to give him the plank of wood. I want you to sleep on this. It toughens the vertebrae. Yeah, with the board, yeah. Was... And then so he looks at the sausages and he says, what in holy hell? Sausages, is this your diet? That's what it was. What in no, holy they're... hell? That's <laughs> no, how he said no, it, they're too. Not... What? They're not mine, Holy Mr. Mandelbaum. Hell? <laughs> I love that line. I love because you know that's the blood episode. Oh, and my favorite I know. little my favorite line from the blood episode is when Jerry goes, "I can feel his blood inside of me, borrowing things yeah. from my blood." 
<laughs> yeah. And then Kramer says, "Here, you can hear me in your pulse." Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> So I'm glad we brought up that episode because that also has the part where, where Kramer goes into the bank and says, all you banks are the same with your interest fees and your rate hikes. I'm taking my blood out. She goes, okay, where would you want to transfer? He goes, no, I'm taking it. Yeah. Oh gosh, that is good. Hey buddy, I'm borrowing all your Tupperware. Yeah. I closed down my account at the blood bank. Yeah. yeah. Goes, Kramer goes, my service rates went up. Your banks are all the same with your hidden fees and your service charges. That's what it was, yeah. I knew it was I'm something keeping like my that. blood in my freezer with my money. Yeah. Yeah, there's some there's some no, really I, I have the I have the whole I have the whole script in front of me. It sounded like you did. It sounded like you were yeah. reading it there. There's some really good times when Kramer comes into the apartment and does random stuff like uh, ask to borrow things or, uh, or says stuff. And like, I love when George is there and uh, I forget there was one, I, I saw it pretty recently, but Kramer comes in and goes, hey, can I uh, borrow your something? And uh, then Kramer leaves and then George says, he doesn't have one? And Jerry goes, I stopped asking those questions a while ago. <laughs> but you know, so who is who is a better like you know this is a this is I don't know if it's it's great for the first um for the for our first call but who is the better friend like who does Jerry in his mind think is num who is the best friend is it Kramer is it George George it's definitely George but George would not have the luxury even if he lived across the street to barge into. I don't think Jerry would allow that. No, he, like he, he, you're right. He wouldn't. He wouldn't allow it. So Kramer definitely has, but it's part of like Kramer's mystique or his like persona or something. But yeah, but George wouldn't do it. Uh, but but Jerry has let George just come over to the apartment for no reason and just watch Home Alone by himself. But I mean, Kramer, Kramer's lived there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but I, I think that Jerry considers George a better friend. But based on based on what? Just because they went to college? Like, because they're longer friends? No, I mean, like, I think Jerry tells George more than he'd tell Kramer. And I think, like, he... I feel like you can't have a great... You can't have too much of a meaningful conversation with the dynamic between um, Jerry and Kramer. Because it's not there. Yeah. Yeah, and then Kramer normally is like trying to tell Jerry what to do also in those situations, you know, or tell Jerry that he's a rabid anti-dentite or something like that. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah, so there's more heart to heart. There's more. So, you know, if Jerry ever got married on the show, you think George is standing next to him? I could, I would be willing to bet a lot of money. Who else is standing there? Who, who else is standing there? So let's say Jerry's got five best men. Okay. So it's George and then Kramer. Okay. I think uh, I think they'd bring back um, the summer me. Uh, what's his name? What about what about the guy that 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 quits his job to, to talk for a second and then no. works with Kenny Rogers? No, he definitely wouldn't bring him. He just screwed him over. But they're not friends. No. He, he might bring what, back... What, about, uh, uh, what, what about, about Poppy? Is Poppy up there? No, Poppy's not a friend. Poppy peed on his couch. Okay. What about, um, what about the... Uh, uh, what's his name that, uh, that runs the, uh, the, the, the restaurant that has every, every origin of food? No, they're not friends. Jerry just thinks that... Jerry just thinks that he helped him. Yeah, they're not friends. I'm telling you, the only other guy from the show I can think of is the guy that uh, gets Jerry the van? So yeah, that that um, so he said. But I mean, so we got two more. It, they don't have to be, sh you know, shown characters. Elaine is the up other... there. Elaine is no, up well, there. No, well, Elaine. Let, let's assume he's marrying Elaine. No, he wouldn't marry Elaine. And then I'll tell you, one, a comedian or two is going to be up there too. Two just comedians that we never saw in the show are going to be up there, I bet. 
I think that... Because um... you're talking about the character, Jerry. So I'm saying that there would be two comedian characters that represent real comedians from Jerry's life that would be up there. Like Mario Joyner. Oh, Mario Joyner might be up there. I think Kenny Banyan would be up there. No, Kenny Banyan's not going to be up there, but Mar I bet you Mario Joyner would be up there. And, and why would you say that Jerry wouldn't marry Elaine? That, we all know that that was going to happen in the very last episode, and they did it, they did it well. They, 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 they alluded to that. No, they're not getting married. They're getting married. What, what makes you think they're not getting married? Because they're not getting they're, married, and I've seen the interviews where they said that was never a thing they were going to do. I think it's a, it's a novice accusation for me to say that they are getting married, but I also think that they're, you know, so, wh so what is your explanation for the, you know, the near-death uh, experience at the very end and both of them alluding to saying that they've always wanted to be together? No, J J Jerry never said I l Elaine was going to say I love you, but Jerry wasn't. Jerry was going to do the same thing. No, he was not. I think you need to re I think you need to go back and look because yeah. And, and George says, "I cheated in the contest." <laughs> what is does Kramer say anything? No, he's just screaming, and he's the one that started the whole thing. He was jumping, trying to get the water out of his ear. He was jumping around in the plane like an idiot. Who who complains? Was it George that complained about the the size of the plane was not the same size that they're yes. giving? Uh, yeah, Ted Danson. Ted Danson, yeah. Yeah. All right, I think we should end on a good question. And okay. the question... I don't know. Do you have one on the top of your head? Because I, I can think of a good one right here. Well, let me ask you before you before let, let's go with your good one. But let me ask you the same question I've asked you about four times, and let's see if you remember it this time. First episode. What's the name of the law firm? Simon Bennett Ross Oppenheimer and Taft. Boom. Simon Bennett Ross Oppenheimer and Taft. Simon Bennett Ross Oppenheimer and Taft. Simon. Bennett. Listen. Okay. So. What's your good one? I'm, I'm proud of you for, for finally putting that into your old noodle. Okay, okay. Um, my good one is, well, I'll just, I, I'll ask you like a trivia one, and then maybe next time we can ask like a broader question. But the trivia one I'm going to ask you is, um, Why did Elaine get back with Putty the first time she got back with him? We don't see it, but it's mentioned. Okay, so is this is the first time when Jerry's betting, or is that the second time? Uh, no, 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 no. I think that's the second time that Jerry starts the betting with the cigar. Okay, so this is before that. Yeah. Okay, so is it is this because... Hold on. Oh. They're arguing about it. Is, it she, is this the one where she goes, okay, we're back together then. Is this because... It, was that that one? No, I don't believe it was. I believe there was one precluding that one. I could, I might have to double check this later, but I'm pretty sure the one I'm thinking of is the first one because George, I think, asks, how did you get back together? And Elaine answers and says this. Can you give me what's going on? They're at the coffee shop. Okay, give it to me. Elaine says they were fumigating his apartment. I don't remember them fumigating Putty's apartment. Well, they never showed it. I don't. I, yeah, I just don't remember that. I don't remember that mention. So we'll they have were to fumigate we'll... his apartment so they get back together because he's sleeping at her apartment. 
We'll have to look it up, but I believe that was the line. Uh, we'll look it up before but, but, our I next mean, but podcast. But the most famous get back together was when Jerry's betting and, and she's yelling, okay, we're back together then. Right, right, right. But that was the same episode. That was where it all started because, remember, they broke oh, up. okay. They broke up, and then they got back together, and they broke up again. And then that's when and then the Elaine, and Elaine then the said, I'm, I'm done and whatever. And yeah, then the bump and Jerry goes, oh, you two are getting back together. She goes, no, we're not. And then that's when it all started. No, we're not. Yeah. That's good. That is a good one. Okay. Well, I think, you know, it was a, it was a rough, uh, it was a rough opener, but I'm glad that we got it off the ground. Yeah. So what, I guess for now we're calling it a podcast about something. I like a podcast about something. Because it's a show about nothing, but the podcast is a, is about something. It's a, it's about the show about nothing. So I think a podcast about something. Podcast about something. Okay, we we'll start with that. We'll start with that. I don't have anything better. Okay. Yeah, I, I like it. I think it'll. I think it. Uh, I think it will. You know, because it's smart. You know, it's it's just like the. <laughs> It's it's smart. Yeah, I really hope that you know. Because you came I, up I gotta, with it. Well, no, I no, I really hope that this microphone is working because it's plugged in and everything like well, that. Do you, do you um, see the levels bouncing up and down when you talk? Yeah, but this is through GarageBand. But you see recording, right? It's recording right now, right? It should say like it's recording. It's thirty it's recording minutes. The whole thing. So it says. Minutes. It says 1,022 bars, 0.6 beats, uh, tempo 120. Okay, I don't know about all that, but it's it shows that it's been recording for like about it's 30 minutes. I'm I'm going to stop it now. Recording is stopped, and then I'm going to file, save as. Save as. A podcast about something, episode one, where desktop later that same evening. Are you there? What if I open it? What if I open it with QuickTime Player? Can QuickTime Player do it for me? I don't know if you can open a GarageBand file with QuickTime Player. I don't think you can. Yeah, so it's, it's giving me that option. Where? When I say, when I'm on the desktop here and I can say open with. Okay, you can try it. See see what happens. What's happening? Nothing yet. Okay. What about now? Uh-huh. Yeah. Share share song to iTunes. Export song to disk. Um, song to SoundCloud. Song to media browser. Wait, 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 wait. Can you even just play it in QuickTime and hear it or no? I, I'm trying to... Because if you can't play it, then don't even do any of these things. Open with QuickTime Player. Okay, now QuickTime Player is bouncing, so now it's going to open with QuickTime Player. Okay. I thought you already. I thought you already uh, did that. Something is from an unidentified developer. Are you sure you want to open? open? Yes. Okay. Okay, it's opening with QuickTime Player. Was that a sneeze? That was just a little clearing situation. <laughs> Okay, so QuickTime Player is opening, okay, a podcast about something. Click play. What happens? I'm, I'm clicking open. Open? I thought it's already open. It's open. Then click play. File, open file, or export as... Whoa, 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 name. no, no. Don't export it unless you can already play it. Can you play it? Later that same evening. But I'll click export, but I don't, I don't know where it's going to. Well, you got, you got to select the location. Well, now it says bouncing, and it's exporting. It's, it's, it's doing something right now. What's bouncing? 
It says brown sink. Uh, can you, why can't you FaceTime? Oh my God. Seriously, I don't understand why can't you FaceTime. You got a freaking iPhone. I can show you everything that's going on. <laughs> I just don't know why you can't save this file. Listen. I'm listening. I grew up in, grew up in a generation. Okay, you grew up in a different generation. Yeah, you're an elder millennial, right? I'm an elder, yeah. I am an elder millennial. Okay, do you think you can figure this out, or what? Yeah, I'll figure it out. In Later that same evening. So it just finished bouncing, and now it says normalizing. I have no clue what this is, what that means, but okay. Well, I, I want it to be anything but normal. <laughs> Later that same evening. Okay, you can hear it. Let's see. Where are you playing it, though? <laughs> Joy just said, call me back. <laughs> Joy, Joy, listen, listen. Uh, I, I love that. Can you talk about the, uh, can you talk about the hand, the hand model episode? First? Hey, where are you playing this? I'm playing it through, uh, through GarageBand after it was done. Normalizing. <laughs> All right, I'm. I gotta go. I'll let you figure it out, and I'll call you back later, or I'll text you so to I'm see. Gonna, if... I'm gonna Google how to how to export a GarageBand file into a WAV file.